our meteorite traveled across the galaxy to be reborn as Excalibur. But that journey will have been for nothing if we can't get past this critical part of the process, trying to straighten the blade at its most vulnerable point before it's hardened. Do try not to drop your sword. Well, I thought this was half of the sword for just a second, and my heart just like, ah! Disaster averted, but we're not out of the woods yet. After a few more tension-filled bends, Almost did it again. Blademaster Jeff is satisfied that our blade is straight. Yeah, I think we're good to go. My Excalibur-inspired meteorite is truly transforming into a thing of real beauty. But it's still a fragile thing of beauty. Time for the next step. I think we should probably make it hard. All right, how do we do that? Uh, we put it into the heat treating furnace. Oh, OK, here we go. <laughs> it's in. The iron and carbon molecules in the steel don't want to mix together, and they have a tendency to separate. It's now getting heated up to 1,400 some odd degrees. 1485-ish. 1485. Heating the sword up to this temperature causes the iron and carbon molecules to loosen up and intermingle. At this critical juncture, rapidly cooling the sword by plunging it into a vat of oil, a process called quenching, will lock those iron and carbon molecules into place in this conjoined state, thereby hardening the steel. We hope. Hopefully they will play nicely. If they don't, <laughs> they can cause catastrophic fractures in this beautiful blade. The key here is to transfer the sword to the quenching vat as fast as humanly possible. Even the slightest cooling of the blade could cause the sword to break. You have a little bit of time. Here. I want to spend the least amount of time possible letting this blade cool. Right, there's I no see. hesitation. You okay. come out and you go in. And yes, focus. Okay. And then we can pull it out and see if it's, um, Still if it's one warped. Piece. If that happens, we'll hear it. Oh. And okay. You'll, you'll go in and it'll go ting. <laughs> okay, so that's it's a bad It's a very set. specific sound which all bladesmiths hate because it's going to break in half. Pull this out here. What like it is? This. Yeah, you need to come straight up and then go straight down. Oh, After taking a little time to practice my maneuver, the sword is finally up to the desired temperature. Smooth. Is it time? I think so. It's time. Here we go. All right. Um, hang on a second. All right. On your mark, get set. There we go. Up, over, and down. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't hear that tink sound. Not yet. Not, oh, it still could happen? <laughs> yes. Oh, OK. <laughs> and we haven't heard the tink but we won't know if the meteorite sword has made it through this process without fracturing until it's cool enough to inspect. Ooh, but look at the pattern. Oh, amazing. Wow, that's the meteorite pattern being seen. Yep. Not only is the sword intact, but the quenching process has revealed this gorgeous pattern of the sword's elemental mix, the iron, carbon, and nickel of our meteorite. That is it's, so beautiful. It's big and beautiful. I love it. Looking at those swirling patterns, I can't help but reflect on the incredible journey through galaxies and across millennia that our meteorite has taken to get here. No matter how beautiful, a blade is only as good as its edge. And it's time to give Excalibur a sharp one befitting of its legend. Jeff gets busy forging the pommel and the cross guard while I make a hand grip for the hilt out of wood. And, oh, and finally, I get to wield my own version of Excalibur. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that is so freaking beautiful. Well, after hours and hours and hours of hammering and moving and adjusting and heating and cooling metal, <sighs> we have achieved a sword made from a meteorite, from iron from the sky. And this makes me 
very happy. <laughs> now I just have to learn how to use it. Bum, bum, bum. My Excalibur. It is solid as a rock, it is sharp as a sword, <laughs> and it is made of iron from the sky. And it feels just so satisfying to finally hold it in my hand. Now I want to do more than just hold it in my hand, I want to run it through its paces. But before I do, the fact is I need a little training. So I'm going to learn how to properly swing a sword in order to properly swing this one. And here to help me learn is historic European martial arts expert, Stephen Fitt. Stephen is an internationally ranked sword fighting instructor and two-time champion at the International Sword and Martial Arts Convention. Stephen, thank you so much for coming in today. Um, would you like to see my Excalibur? That's a beautiful piece. I would love to. I'll trade you. All right. I'm a professional sword fighter, and I've been fighting with European bladed weapons for over 30 years. The thing I like about Adam's meteorite sword is that it's a work of art. The edges, the pattern in the blade, the work that just went into it to bring it into existence is amazing. And when you hold it, you can feel how it moves around. Because of where the center of balance is, yeah. this makes this a cutting sword. This is going to be a fantastic cutting sword. Now, you teach people every day an ancient fighting technique. Tell me about HEMA. HEMA means Historic European Martial Arts. Okay. It is the study of the techniques and the martial culture throughout Europe. So can you teach me how to swing this like a real knight? I certainly can. What I'm doing with Adam is I'm getting him to be comfortable holding the sword in place. It's not just us swinging the sword, it's us moving in conjunction with the sword. So we're gonna put our sword on our shoulder, Bring it forward. Steven Hold has over. obviously taught a lot of people <laughs> how to safely swing large, sharpened objects. Turn it over. You turn too much. There we go. I want to stand on this side. Go back to your shoulder. Go ahead and begin your action again. Now stop there. See how you broke oh, your I'm wrist? Piv pivoting. You're hurting your structure. He also seems to display a lot of trust because I'm this neophyte swinging around an actual sword and his comfort level seems pretty relaxed to me. So, cut, sheath with the shoulder yep. down. I've spent a couple of hours learning really some of the most basic rudiments of handling a sword. This is so much more difficult and more complicated than I thought it was gonna be. And that realization is somewhat astounding. Sure, swinging a sword around, something most of us have done as kids, is easy. But true swordsmanship, with the proper knowledge and technique, is a highly complex art. One that I'm honestly having a hard time picking up. We're using a dull sword now. Okay, just for practice, right. this is your... Now okay. remember, this is one that I actually fight with and I hit people with, so it does not have an edge. Right, right. The reason I want to use this sword first, yeah. you don't have to muscle it. And you're saying this dull sword will go through the watermelon? Easily, you will be very surprised. Okay, and that will also help me not try to overpower the sharp sword. Correct. Okay. Make sense? Yes, it does. I All right. have a low amount of expectation that I will get this right. What I want you to do, mm -hmm. don't think. That's definitely easy for him to say. My mind is overloaded with information about swinging that sword. I'm kind of stressed out. I want to do good. I want the shot to be good. I want the cut to be clean. Relax your hand. OK. Don't swing anymore. Relax until you're ready to go. But even more than that, I'm, I'm continually remembering that it's about letting go of those things and just letting this thing do its work. Coming up like this. Don't force it. It'll do the job. OK. You cut into the wood. I certainly did. With a dull sword. Okay, but tell me what the angle here tells me. Like, is that a good straight cut? That's a cut? good angle. There's no deviation in your trajectory. Because you let the sword do the work, you did not throw your shoulder. Nice. 
Frankly, the lead up was kind of stressful. There's this point at which you've got to give up some control over the body and let the tool do its work. And once I got to that point, this thing just fell right through a watermelon. That's amazing to me.